I grew up uh, on a family farm, and at an early age, I would watch my father and other people out working in the fields, driving tractors, running the combine. And so I would start drawing those with crayons and color pencils, and that was some of the first interest I had in actually doing any kind of artwork. Um, Clifton's also were pretty big time waterfowl hunters, so as I got a little older still, um, I became interested in waterfowl hunting and I also paid a lot of attention to some of those early magazines like Sports of Field, Field and Stream, Ducks Unlimited, and some of the artwork that was in there being done some of, by some of these well-known artists at the time. And that inspired me and caused me to think that I'd really like to see if I could pursue that as a career, and that was how I got down the road to trying to become a wildlife and waterfowl artist. Well, I became aware of the federal duck stamp, I think initially, since my father was a waterfowl hunter, I'd see the stamps that he would buy, and um, that piqued my interest. And so as I got old enough to actually enter, I don't think I entered right away, but the earliest entry I can recall, um, and probably my first entry, was a pair of ringneck ducks into the contest. And the interesting thing about that is then years later when I did finally win the contest um, for the first time, I won it with a pair of ringneck ducks. Well, hunters were, I think, some of, one of the first conservationists, and um, they also supported wildlife art and waterfowl art. And so the combination of the two working together through various organizations and even events like the Waterfowl Festival, it's been a win-win situation, um, raising money to enhance and protect um, waterfowl habitat, which also um, protects habitat for other forms of wildlife as well. Okay, so we're here today at the Gallery at Eastman, which is my own personal gallery. And typically what I have here are a lot of my wildlife and waterfowl prints, and often um, I have a lot of my uh, original artwork here as well. And um, a lot of various other things. Usually I always have some songbird pieces, and most notably certainly some waterfowl pieces as well. So the other part of uh, obviously doing an entry is picking out your design and composition. I've chosen in this case to do a pintail. And so I've gone through a lot of my reference photos that I think I've mentioned before that I take a lot of my own reference photos. And I like this single drake. A single drake sometimes makes a good composition for things like uh, a junior federal or the actual federal contest. Because it is a smaller size, you can put the single bird and make it a lot bigger. And it works well a lot of times for a competition. You can keep the design rather simple. So I may, as you see here, and here just go with a single drake but I have options so it's good to leave yourself some options one of the other options would be that I could do something where I put a little reed bank or a little grass bank back in here another option also would be I could put a hen pintail in this same area and all of those would all work well compositionally and a little bit of, of the uh, Indian yellow hue with a little bit of white to see if I can come over here and start to begin to highlight this and bring it around tonally to be a little more in line with what it is in the photo. I'm trying to show lighting because lighting is what gives you form so that your ducks don't look flat. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about is when working on a contest entry is some different compositions and the fact that you could do flying bird as well as a bird on the water. And this would be a good example of, again, 
with just a single bird composition because you can get the bird bigger in the overall image, which works well for stamp design. Also, it gives you a triangle composition, and you can also think of laying that triangle on its side. It doesn't always have to go this way. It can run almost this way, and this piece has a nice composition that way. Also, talking about the differences between doing, a, say, a contest entry compared to just maybe a regular painting that you would do to sell to a possible collector. There's a lot more freedom when you're working on just a painting to possibly sell to a collector. For example, um, all this space up here and down here would be very difficult in a contest entry because if this were to be reproduced to stamp size, think about it, these burrs down here would then be very small. So you have a lot more freedom when you're working on just a regular painting than when you're working in that contest format where you have specific sizes and they're usually small and you know the end result is an image that will be re reduced to stamp size.